Hello, welcome, good morning. Uh, so today we will have a session about seven reasons to become a local, local cloud service provider. My name is Maciek Mazur, I'm running Telco in Canonical. Uh, so obviously we do a lot of stuff related to OpenStack and Kubernetes, but today I wanted to share a few stories from various different customers and uh, other people on the market who are doing interesting stuff with OpenStack and becoming a cloud service provider even though this is not their core business or that's not something that uh, would be obvious from that particular use case. So basically we see uh, that many companies who are not directly in those businesses are building their own public clouds and giving access to people. We have seen the talk from Deutsche Telekom uh, colleagues who are one of the more innovative operators and already doing that. However, there are also like cell tower companies, the ones that own real estate and the antennas. Uh, also the cities themselves, uh, building their smart city infrastructure, they are a good uh, target for that and the communities that are building private mobile networks. And last but not least, this would be places like museums, stadiums, any kind of place where you have a lot of people gathering and you have a compute infrastructure. This compute infrastructure could be actually put in a good use uh, with additional users. So if we look at the promises that 5G is bringing with the whole low latency thing and also the uh, industrial revolution that is happening right now, uh, it all requires huge amount of compute. So if you look at the automation for a production plant, that's one of the more interesting use cases. There is a production plant in India which is running the full set of digital twins and AI ML at the edge, and they have a huge amount of uh, compute with NVIDIA GPUs. However, the factory is not operating 24 seven because of the production process that they have and the materials that they need to scan. They have like 12 hours during the night where there is almost nothing happening. So imagine you invest this like tens of millions into expensive compute, buy all, all of those GPUs and there is nothing uh, really happening for half of the time. So what they decided to do is to basically open it up as a public cloud infrastructure for some of their uh, collaborating partners. And what they managed to do is actually have everyone in the supply chain, so all the companies that are delivering like from a small screw and like metal pieces to bigger components, to have their apps running there and utilize the synergy effects of exchanging data and information on the same infrastructure and also basically getting some of the investment back that they did. Uh, the same goes for the autonomous vehicles. Uh, the nice example is one of the cities in South America. They actually have the buses and tests for self-driving buses and what they decided to do to basically self-fund the whole experiment was to put some infrastructure on the bus and allow the companies in the city who are selling like tickets to aqua parks and the kind of places to put their apps directly into their infrastructure and did it also utilizing open source technologies and basically building their own public cloud. Another benefit is that you are bringing your partners closer to you. So actually this uh, triggers the collaboration between the IT teams of the owner of the infrastructure and the companies that are participating uh, in this kind of public cloud space. And uh, we saw a lot of benefits, uh, especially in the use case that I have on the next slide here, which is the port. So uh, in one of the cities in Asia, there is a port where they started building uh, more advanced use cases. They have automated ground vehicles, like the small platforms that move containers around the port and they also have systems to basically stack the containers up and do all the loading. And they built a quite powerful infrastructure uh, over 3,000 nodes, also doing AIML, facial recognition, GPU enabled and stuff. And the companies that are actually doing logistics started deploying there and getting the data not only from the infra itself, but also the private mobile network that was deployed. So they utilize open source projects like Magma, and open run for running the 5G network there. And from the things like location management function, they were able to get the location of all the devices that were connected and actually give this as a service to all the people who deployed on the public cloud. So whenever the truck driver comes in, uh, 
every shipment is already started to be tracked. The data from the network are going to the application. So that enables additional use cases and let them monetize the infrastructure in a better way. And so about monetizing the infrastructure. So obviously, this kind of investments in big data centers are big uh, in money-wise. And the infrastructure that you are building, which uh, is not utilized, like in the cases that I talked about previously, uh, is generating costs and uh, using a lot of power. So what we have seen is a company that is doing renewable energy and building a lot of plants around Poland, they uh, have spikes of power and they actually don't have a good usage uh, because the energy grid was not able to take that much power. So what they decided to do is to become a local public cloud operator for the governmental agencies and uh, regional like offices. And what they managed to do is actually increase by 40% their revenue stream. And this revenue stream from the public cloud is outgrowing the uh, stream coming from the energy itself. So basically, just utilizing this spikes to power the data center was a, another idea how like non-typical companies utilizing uh, the OpenStack to build a public cloud. And uh, yeah, so uh, the plus but not least, the super important point that it's actually easy. So thanks to the open source tooling and the technology that you guys together with us will create, you can quite quickly deploy both OpenStack and Kubernetes and build this kind of infrastructure in a secure way. It's proven in many career grade cases and it provides a really great price performance. So actually what I would encourage you to do, since most of the people here are a technical crowd, uh, is to whenever you are building an OpenStack infrastructure, either for your own company or for someone else, try to fit in and also like uh, broadcast the idea that whatever this infrastructure is doing, it should be actually, like it's a good idea to consider making it a public cloud if there is a time when it's not used, because this will make the whole hardware investment and also the <clears throat> like footprint for the environment, both in terms of energy and uh, manufacturing of the servers and so on, less uh, difficult for our planet and increase the sustainability of what we do. So with that, we can jump to the Q&A. And uh, also I wanted to introduce to Skurek, who is actually leading our OpenStack engineering uh, and product. So uh, if you have any questions to the infrastructure, please ask them now or visit us at booth B11. Questions? No questions. Okay. Thanks, guys.